Good morning, ladies and gen gentlemen. The topic of today's lecture is azathioprine in dermatology. You know, after methotrexate, the most important steroid sparing drug in dermatology is azathioprine. So let's discuss the important details regarding this drug. What is azathioprine or mercaptopurine? Azathioprine is an anti-metabolite thiopurine analog drug that interferes with DNA synthesis and suppress the immune system response. Azathioprine is metabolized in liver to mercaptopurine, also known as 6-mercaptopurine or 6-MP. Mercaptopurine is then converted to thiogunine nucleotide, which inhibits the cell growth. Approved azathioprine indications. Prevention of organ transplant rejection, which is the indication in which azathioprine is used the most. Then rheumatoid arthritis and Crohn's disease. The dermatological approved indications include SLE, dermatomyositis and polyarthritis nodosa. However, there are several off-label indications with good evidence. And these include atopic dermatitis, pemphigus vulgaris, bullous pemphigoid, pyoderma gangrenosum, prurigo, Bichet's disease, relapsing polychondritis, and sarcoidosis. Mechanism of action. Azathioprine has been widely prescribed since 1960. However, its mechanism of action as well as that of its metabolite, 6 mercaptopurine is not fully understood. There are a number of proposed mechanisms that include immunosuppression that occurs after mercaptopurine crosses the cell membrane and become intracellularly activated. Reduction in cell division through self in Corporation into DNA and RNA as false nucleotide halts the cell division. Drug forms and dosing. Azathioprine is available as oral tablets as well as intravenous infusion. The bioavailability of the drug varies between the different formulations. Drug reduction may be required in patients with hepatic or renal impairments. The onset of therapeutic benefit with, with azathioprine is slow and may not be apparent in two to three months. This should be, um, this should be told uh, to the patients and the prescribing dermatologist should also know that the steroid sparing effects of azathioprine will start after two to three months. Patient expectations need to be realistic. Since azathioprine is a slow acting drug, an effect may persist after the drug has been discontinued for a few months. The usual azathioprine regime is two to three milligram per kilogram per day. In patients with normal thiopurine methyl transferase activity. In patients with subnormal TPMT activity, that is between 5 to 13.7 picomole, the dose should be limited to 1 to 1.5 milligram per kg per day in divided doses. It is contraindicated in patients with low or absent TPMT activity. It is also generally advised to use lower doses in elderly patients and uh, TPMT testing is unreliable for up to 60 days after red cell transfusion. Benefits of azathioprine. 
it's a potential steroid sparing agent. There are multiple dose forms and strengths which allow for easy dose titration and oral formulations are available and it is not very costly. Disadvantages may take several months for full benefits to be seen. So the usual way is to treat the patient with uh, both steroids and azathioprine and uh, steroid is continued till the disease remission. And uh, after a few months, when azathioprine effect sets in, then steroid is gradually withdrawn. Metabolism varies between the individuals and regular blood test monitoring is required. Pre-therapy assessment. Emphasize the patient need for toxicity monitoring with regular blood test. If patient is unable to comply, then the, those patients should not be advised as a thyroprene. Advise the patient to seek urgent medical attention if they develop signs or symptoms of azathioprine hypersensitivity, bone marrow suppression, or liver impairment. So the patient should be warned about unexplained high fever and severe flu-like illness, unexplained bruising, and new onset of jaundice. Baseline investigations. Before prescribing azathioprine, you must order full blood count, urea and electrolytes, liver function test, hepatitis B and hepatitis C serology, HIV serology in high risk groups, testing for latent tuberculosis and TPMT levels. Investigations during treatment. Regular full blood count is, should be done weekly for the first four to eight weeks and then done at longer intervals. That may be about a month or two months. LFTs and RFTs monthly for first three months, then every two months. Biannual physical examination focusing on lymph node examination and skin cancer examination. Squamous cell carcinoma in particular. And pregnancy testing if indicated. The most important point is the TPMT testing. Whenever the facility of TPMT testing is done, it should always be done before prescribing as a thyroprene. TPMT level will give a low level when the value is less than 5 units per ml or intermediate when the level is 5 to 13.7 units per ml or high level means more than 13.8 units per ml. In case of low enzymatic activity, that which is seen in approximately 11% of population or lack of enzyme activity, which is seen in 1 in 300 people, such patients, if prescribed as a thyroprene, are at severe risk of bone marrow suppression. Conversely, if the level of TPMT is high, then the patient requires higher doses than normal. Discontinuation of treatment, prompt reduction in dosage or temporary withdrawal of drug in consultation with a hematologist is necessary when the neutrophil count falls to less than 1 into 10 to raise power 9 per liter or lymphocyte count falls to 0.5 into 10 to raise power 9 per liter or platelet counts fall to less than 50 into 10 to raise power 9 per liter. Delayed hematological suppression may also occur. The TPMT testing cannot be substituted for complete blood count monitoring while patient on azathioprine therapy. Drug interaction. There are several drugs which would interact and would uh, cause problems when azathioprine is prescribed. The first and foremost is allopurinol, which has an increased risk of pancytopenia if used concurrently. So allopurinol is a big no in case of azathioprine therapy. Cyclophosphamide, methotrexate and cyclosporin increase the risk of myelotoxicity. So no, so these uh, three immunosuppressives should never be combined with azathioprine. 
Captopril may increase the risk of anemia and leukopenia. Warfarin need an increased dose of warfarin. Pancuronium, uh, pen, uh, which is a muscle relaxant, uh, may need an increased dose for the educate paralysis. Cotrimoxazole increase the hematological toxicity. Rifampicin decrease azathioprine efficacy and also is hepatotoxic. Ribavirin may increase the risk of azathioprine-related myelotoxicity. And live vaccine should not be prescribed to immunocompromised individuals. Contraindication. The absolute contraindication is low or uh, absent level of TPMT activity, allergy to azathioprine, severe impaired hepatic or bone marrow functions, patients suffering from pancreatitis, pregnancy or attempting pregnancy, lactation, clinically significant acute infection, and concurrent malignancy. The relative contraindications use concurrent use of allopurinol, prior therapy with uh, chlorambucil or cyclophosphamide, renal impairment, viral hepatitis, HIV infection, previous varicella zoster virus exposure, and pre-malignancy. Precaution. Live vaccine and phototherapy because phototherapy would increase the risk of SCC. Pregnancy and breastfeeding. Treatment with azathioprine during all stages of pregnancy should be avoided except where benefits outweighs the risks. F females of childbearing potential should be advised of the risks involved and use effective contraception uh, where appropriate. The teratogenicity is uh, unclear in men taking azathioprine and educate contraception is advised for in men who are taking azathioprine. Although low concentration of 6 mercaptopurine is found in the breast milk, there has been no evidence to suggest harm to the lactating baby. Side effects. The principal and potential side effect of azathioprine is the is hematological and gastrointestinal. The risk of secondary infection and neoplasia are also significant, but they come in the uh, after these two major effects. Myelosuppression can develop very quickly despite regular blood monitoring and can be severe. It is more common at the start of the treatment, especially if TPMT deficiency is not tested or not recognized. Nausea is a common side effect. Other GI effects are vomiting, diarrhea, and pancreatitis. The symptoms of gastrointestinal toxicity most often develop within the first several weeks of therapy and are reversible upon discontinuation of the drug. So, GI side effects are not that serious, but they are common. Hypersensitivity reaction present with various combination of fever, hypotension, hepatitis, oligoduria, and respiratory stress, and are sometimes accompanied by morbiliform rash. So, if a patient develops the hypersensitivity reaction once, this patient should not be prescribed as a thyprene again. There is an increased risk of various malignancies, for example, cutaneous like squamous cell carcinoma and lymphoproliferative. There is also an increased risk of infections. The additional side effects, which are less frequently seen, include skin rashes, alopecia, fever, arthralgia, steatoria, interstitial limonitis, and sweet syndrome. So despite of all the side effects and the meticulous monitoring which is required in patients prescribed as a thioprene, the drug is still one of the very important and useful drugs in dermatology and should be prescribed whenever indicated. I thank you all for a very patient listening. See you next time for another edition of my talk.